What is up, y'all? This is Scarlett, a.k.a. Scardi B, a.k.a. your resident emo historian. And join me as I unpack the history of Fall Out Boy and hip hop. Look, y'all, there is a lot to cover in this limited run podcast. So strap on in, cause sugar, we're going in. Here it is your girl, Scardi. Welcome back to Sugar, we're going in. How are you? How's your spirit? Wait, most importantly, how is your back? Because I know I just got back from uh, so much for Tour Dust, Fall Out Boys Tour, and I literally walked out with a motherfucking pinched nerve, okay? Because, uh, A, speaking of nerve, someone had the nerve to put me in the pit, and I don't even remember the last time I've been in the pit. In the 16 years that I've been seeing Fall Out Boy, um, I can't tell you the last time I was in the pit. Maybe 2013. I'm not even kidding you. Maybe 2013 was the last time I've been in a Fall Out Boy pit, but your girl went in. Your girl had fun. They played Pavlov. Sound the alarms, y'all. Like, that, it, the pinch nerve itself was worth it for the Pavlov. Look, uh, regardless, I, I just wanted to make sure that I was checking in on us emo geriatrics, you know, because shit gets hard sometimes. But you know what? We're fucking harder. Okay, so this week on Sugar We're Going In is going to be a little bit different. You notice that I didn't just jump in and be like, the year is 2005. Um, This week, we have a very special interview. Now, this interview is so full circle for me because... Let me give y'all some context. Y'all remember when you had your first car and you would have to put a cassette um, that connects to your iPod into the radio to like play shit off your like phone or iPod? Yes? No? Anyway, I had to do that. And me and my best friend Megan would ride around listening to this person all the time on SoundCloud because that's where you got the hottest mixes. That's where you got the most up-to-date club mixes and just shit that made your ass shake. So I get to talk to this said person that I used to listen to all the fucking time riding around in high school, um, DJ Slink, y'all. So we have DJ Slink this week here on the podcast. We actually just talked about him last episode when talking about Gym Class Heroes. Now, this year, DJ Slink has released a Cupid's Chocold Club remix. I'm talking the first official club remix of Cupid's Chokehold. It it was released this year and I have the immense pleasure of A, talking to him about it, B, giving him his flowers, letting him know, you know, how much I listen to it and how much it means to, you know, just talk to him about it. And most importantly, uh, we got down to the business about like what it means to be a black and a brown person who listens to this type of music. I mean, holy shit, we even end up singing Aerosmith. Now, disclaimer, This was at a party. It was at at the green room of a wild party here in Philly. But I think we did pretty well. We found we found a nice little corner um, that we could be able to talk in. um, And I think we got just exactly what we needed out of it. So I'm really excited. Without further ado, please join me in listening to the interview with myself and the king of Jersey Club, DJ Slink. Yo, what's up? It is Scarlett, a.k.a. Scardi B, here with a very, very special edition of Sugar We're Going In, the only podcast about Fall Out Boy and hip-hop. And I'm here with someone that we literally just talked about last episode, the DJ Slink. How you feeling? I'm feeling very good. Thank you for having me. I'm glad that I'm here tonight. Thank you so much for coming and talking to me a little. Um, Something that really excited me when I was researching 2006 and just Cupid's Chokehold and... uh, Gym Class Heroes in general was your remix that came out this year. And I emailed you at like 1 a.m. on some random night. It was like, yo, like, I I said, I said, you are the first person to put Patrick Stump on an official Jersey Club remix. Can you tell me a little bit about why Cupid's Chokehold and why it happened? Okay, so um, Cupid's Chokehold means a lot to me. Um, I was 16 when I first heard heard Cupid's Chokehold. Um, Travi, man, all the girls wanted them. All the girls love them. They still want them. They still love them. Travi was such an inspiring person because he was not only black, but mixed. I remember just going to school and they would be like, I'll be listening to stuff like that. And they'd be like, yo, but you black. Why are you listening to that? You know what I'm saying? And it was like, yo, Travi made it okay to be black and or mixed, whatever you want to be with. He made it 
good to be black and whatever you mix with to listen to that kind of music. So that kind of opened my eyes to a lot of stuff. And that's the way I actually traveled the world and did different things is because he inspired me to do that. I know people that wouldn't even do anything because people would judge them a certain way. Um, he was at the forefront of a lot of that. And I really appreciate that. And it was just crazy. Like I heard that when I was 16 and then I wind up doing a remix this year. Um, I did a, a, a remix to Cupid Chokehold officially that just came out probably like a couple months ago. But it was I think it was like 10 years in the making, something like that. But it was crazy. That was 2016 or something like that to now. But we, we, we did the business. We did that. Um, I love him wholeheartedly. He's a mentor. I love him to death. I love him to death. He is really one of the best people. Uh, Travi's been a huge supporter of the podcast, and he even came out with Fall Out Boy um, a couple weeks ago at Forest right Hills. Now, yes, he is. He's about to be on tour with All Time Low this yeah, fall. Yeah, yeah. And uh, talk to me. So you talked to me a little bit about your relationship with Gym Class Heroes. Um, and did, you know, how'd you meet Travi? How'd you get in contact after you know this inspired you so much? Okay. Um. So I met Travi through my uh, now manager uh, Johnny Maroney. Uh, at Mood Swing Management. I uh, used to be a booking uh, agency as well, but they've always had a, a great contact. Uh, Johnny Maroney comes from um, people like uh, Swayze and Tyga. Ooh, and, you know, yeah, people like that, you know. You don't know about the Corona and Lime. You weren't I, there. That's, a, that's one of the first <laughs> records that I remixed. Put the Lime in the Corona. That's yeah. one of the first re uh, songs that I remixed. So it kind of comes full circle. And when things come full circle, I really just appreciate it so much more. But me and Travi have like a deeper relationship than any industry situation. We talk, we figure things out. I got so much love for him. A hundred percent. And talk to me, what is the art form to a good remix? Because like we've got Patrick Stump on the hook and the hook is so important to the remix and, you know, the percussion and, and what you're remixing. Tell me what stays, what goes, like what is the art of the remix? Okay, hey, so now we're talking about what's important, what stays and what goes. So we got to think about how do we identify a song when we hear it? Uh, a perfect Jersey Club remix is like you keeping that thing that people know. You're not changing it up too much. Don't chop it up too much. Don't do nothing too crazy. Keep that main hook. Keep whatever you're gonna go through because it's gonna it's gonna bring those listeners in that that literally listen to the regular one. Mm -hmm. And then when the beat drop, they're not expecting that. They're gonna listen to the drop. So it's like yo, just keep it the way it is, but give it that sauce when that beat drop. That's it. That sauce on the beat drop. The beat drop. <laughs> yeah, That's gonna be. You gotta give a little sauce before it drop too, but don't go too crazy. Just. Do your thing, but when that beat drop, yeah, do it like that. I love it. I felt it. It's, it's my favorite. I listen to it every day since it came out back in April. Thank you. Um, so thank you so much. And thank then uh, what are some of your favorite me remixes? Um, Well, it, I mean, I could talk about remixes, but here we go again. We're talking about, like, I know people that used to say, like, yo, you're black. You can't listen to this kind of music. I used to listen to The Fray. I used to listen to Gym Class Heroes. Like, I even made a remix to How to Save a Life in 2000, and I want to say six or 16, so one of them. But I made a remix to everything. Um, I just like remixing things myself. Everything I remix is lit. It's up. It's up. You heard it here first. Stop playing. You feel me? <laughs> what are some other bands that inspire you? Because Fall Out Boy is my favorite band. I've been, I've been a fan since for 18 years. I've been seeing them live for 16 years now. Oh, talk to oh. me. Talk to me about your favorite bands. My favorite bands. Okay, Gym Class Heroes. Uh, I don't know if the Fray is a band, but if they are, I fuck with the Fray. Yeah. Um, they save oh, lives. They do. They do. <laughs> but I do mess with uh, Aerosmith. Oh yeah. I just literally did a remix to. All right. So it's the first song I ever cried off of. It was the uh, movie Armageddon. And, you know, he had to leave his uh, a daughter and, mm -hmm. you know, save the earth and things like that. And that shit came on like, don't wanna close my eyes. <laughs> Something made me cry. I was like, I just started busting down tearing. And mind you, I was like, I had to be like eight or nine years old. I don't know. But I just recently did a remix of that. And I killed it. Maybe it'll be out soon. I'll give it to her. I just got to tune in. And I got to get it from her. I'm yeah. not putting it out. I, I, I need the permission because they be they, they be clearing me out. I'm going to you. I'm gonna give it to you. Say, yo, you heard it here. I have the exclusive Aerosmith remix. We're going to cry together about it. We're going to cry. 
I don't want to fall asleep because I miss you, baby. And I don't want to miss a thing. Damn. Wow, the fucking exclusive right here. Yo, I might cry a little right now. This is the most emo interview I've ever done, just off of that, John. I mean, but I'm saying, like, if somebody was to look at me, they would think, like, oh, he like rap music. You can't judge Girl, a book by its cover. Look at me in front of Fall Out Boy shows the fucking. I know. I'm just saying, like, <laughs> when somebody look at somebody, they're gonna say, "Well, oh, we like rap music." He like Lil Wayne. He like. No, and we do and. We do and some. You know what I'm saying? So absolutely. Just pay attention for real. Like, ask somebody what they really like going on besides the, you know. And and what's the gateway from emo to EDM? Like, if someone was trying to getting get into like club music and they like rock, like where should they start? Do your homework. Start from the bottom. Do your fucking homework. Do your homework. That's it. That's it. That's Say it. less. And and then talk to me. What is your favorite Fall Out Boy song and or album? I mean, I don't have a favorite Fall Out Boy song or album. Album. I'm sorry. I don't have a favorite Fall Out Boy song or album. Everything they do is just elite. I just love it. I love it. I, I agree, too. Like, they make me choose, but... No, it's amazing. Well, yo, thank you so much, DJ Sling, for hitting with me. This is my first interview on the podcast, and it is such an honor for it to be with you. Leave it, leave, leave the people off. Tell them that we went the fuck in. Thank you so much. We out. Peace. Booyaka. Bye. Boop, 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 boop. We out. How amazing was that, you guys? Y'all, I'm so incredibly inspired by that conversation. I literally feel filled to my gills with gratitude, really because that specific part of the conversation, I'm sure y'all felt it too, the the word and, right? We like rap and, we like rock and. Um, and I, I really loved what he said really eloquently, which is pay attention. Pay attention to uh, the people around you and stop assuming. Uh, what's that Kendrick line? Uh, too many complexities to learn me from Google. Like, that's really what I feel like that conversation was about, you know, where it's like, yes, not only am I the the king of Jersey club, like I, I am I am I am so much more. I get inspiration from so many more places. And it's not because I'm black or this is white, but it's because this is good. And and I'm a musician and I'm a producer and I'm an artist. Um, so I hope that y'all really like that conversation because I really loved having it. I mean, again, I remember riding around listening to his music in high school. So it was very full circle to be able to sit down with this amazing gentleman of a person, an incredible artist who literally had two other shows to go to that same night. But um, those 10 minutes that we spent together, um, I will literally never forget it. But without further ado, I want you to listen to the club mix of Cupid's Chokehold. So you know the drill, shake that ass, share the podcast, write a review, drop your social security number, name your kid after, no, I'm kidding, you know. <laughs> Enjoy Cupid's Chokehold club mix by D. DJ Slink, and I'll see y'all soon. Bye. Take a look at my girlfriend. She's the only one I got. Not much of a girlfriend. I never seem to get a lot. It's been some time since we last spoke. This is gonna sound like a bad joke. But mama, I fell in love again. It's safe to say I hit that ass with my back. And I know it sounds so old, but Cupid got me in a chokehold. And I'm afraid I might give in. Towels on the mat, my white flag is waving. I mean, she even cooks me pancakes. And I'll get special when my tummy aches. If that ain't love, then I don't know what love is. We even got a secret handshake, and she loves the music. DJ Slick makes. I know I'm young, but if I had to choose her or the sun, I'd be hitting that ass with a back, back.